the extraordinary responsibility that was on our shoulders to carry out the mission correctly, as the second human to set foot on the moon during the historic Apollo 11 mission, has long intrigued the world. Buzz Aldrin's silence about his lunar experience has fueled speculation and curiosity, but recent admissions by Aldrin have ignited a storm of interest. What did Aldrin witness on the lunar surface, and how could this change our approach to lunar exploration? Join us as we delve into Buzz Aldrin's revelations and explore the implications of his long-awaited confessions. The moon was the last big goal in the space race between the USA and the Soviet Union, which began when the Soviets launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, into space on October 4, 1957. This event surprised the United States and prompted increased space exploration efforts through NASA. The Soviets further advanced by sending Yuri Gagarin into space on April 12, 1961, making him the first person to orbit Earth. In response, U.S. President John F. Kennedy vowed to land an American astronaut on the moon before the end of the 1960s, initiating the Apollo program. The climax of this race was the successful Apollo 11 mission on July 20, 1969, when American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first people to walk on the moon. Studying the moon is vital for understanding planetary formation and evolution in our solar system, and it also aids in comprehending Earth's history. Additionally, the moon could serve as a starting point for future missions to explore the rest of space. Culturally, it has fascinated humanity for ages, inspiring stories, myths, and art. Recently, renowned astronaut Buzz Aldrin shared insights about the mysterious side of the moon based on his Apollo 11 experiences. Aldrin, one of the first humans to land on the moon in 1969, offered unique perspectives on its unexplored regions highlighting the challenges and wonders of lunar exploration. His account provides a first-hand look at the captivating landscapes and geological features of this untamed lunar territory. Born as Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr. on January 20, 1930, Buzz Aldrin is recognized for his roles as an astronaut, engineer, and fighter pilot. His achievements include conducting three spacewalks during the Gemini 12 mission in 1966 and serving as the Lunar Module Eagle pilot during Apollo 11, where he became the second person to walk on the moon. Aldrin's academic journey began with excellence at the United States Military Academy at West Point, where he graduated third in his class in 1951 with a degree in mechanical engineering. He then served as a jet fighter pilot in the United States Air Force during the Korean War completing 66 combat missions and earning recognition for downing two MiG-15 aircraft. Aldrin later obtained a Doctor of Science degree in astronautics from MIT, becoming the first astronaut with a doctoral degree. His role as a NASA astronaut solidified his place in history, earning him the nickname Zhbuzz, Zh which even inspired the fictional character Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story franchise. After an esteemed career at NASA, Aldrin became commandant at the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School until his retirement in 1972, following 21 years of service. He has been a strong advocate for space exploration, particularly for a human mission to Mars. Aldrin also created the Aldrin Cycler, a space route that makes traveling to Mars more efficient in terms of time and fuel. His contributions to space exploration earned him honors such as the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1969. Initially rejected due to a lack of test pilot experience, Aldrin reapplied when NASA changed their criteria, requiring either test pilot experience or 1,000 hours of jet aircraft flying time. With over 2,500 flying hours, including 2,200 in jets, Aldrin exceeded the qualifications and was selected as one of NASA's astronaut group three members in October 1963. Aldrin's role in the Gemini program solidified his importance in space exploration. Initially a backup crew member for Gemini 10, he and Jim Lovell were promoted to the prime crew after the tragic deaths of the original crew in an air crash. This unexpected change thrust Aldrin into a leadership role, leading to his significant contributions to space missions. During Gemini 12, launched on November 11, 1966, Aldrin achieved various milestones including successful rendezvous and docking maneuvers and multiple EVAs, setting records and contributing significantly to scientific goals. This paved the way for his role as Lunar Module Pilot in the Apollo 11 mission, 
marking a milestone in American space exploration. On July 16, 1969, about one million people watched the launch of Apollo 11 from various spots near Cape Canaveral, Florida. The event was broadcast live on TV in 33 countries, and about 25 million Americans tuned in, making it a monumental moment in space exploration history. Apollo 11 took off at 1332 Universal Time coordinated from Kennedy Space Center, entering Earth's orbit 12 minutes later. It then headed towards the Moon after circling Earth one and a half times, using its SIVB third stage engine. By July 19, Apollo 11 was behind the Moon and fired its engine to enter lunar orbit. During about 30 orbits, the crew scouted their landing site in the Sea of Tranquility. The next day, Aldrin and Armstrong entered the lunar module, Eagle, and prepared to land. At 1744, the Eagle separated from the command module Columbia. Aldrin provided critical navigation data to Armstrong during their descent to the moon's surface. Despite computer problems, Armstrong manually landed the module with very little fuel left. They touched down on July 20. Aldrin, a Presbyterian elder, conducted a religious ceremony on the moon, a first in space exploration. They then prepared for a spacewalk, and Aldrin stepped onto the moon on July 21, 19 minutes after Armstrong. They planted the lunar flag, conducted experiments, and spoke with President Nixon. They also set up scientific instruments like a seismometer and a laser reflector. After exploring, they used a pulley to lift lunar samples and film boxes to the hatch, transferred everything to the lunar module's life support system, discarded unnecessary equipment, closed the hatch, and rested. They then launched an Eagle's ascent stage to rendezvous with Collins aboard Columbia in lunar orbit, leaving the ascent stage in lunar orbit and beginning their journey back to Earth. They splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24 after 195 hours, 18 minutes, and 35 seconds in space. After Apollo 11, Aldrin continued working in space-related fields and helped design the space shuttle. When the Apollo program ended, he returned to the Air Force in 1971. During his time at NASA, Aldrin spent 289 hours and 53 minutes in space, with 7 hours and 52 minutes doing extravehicular activities. He described the far side of the moon, which he observed during the Apollo mission, as a magnificent desolation. This region, unlike the near side, is rugged with many impact craters and mountains, and it undergoes significant temperature changes. The far side of the moon has been sporadically visible from Earth due to libration, revealing about 18% of it. The remaining 82% was unseen until the Soviet probe Luna 3 took the first photos in October 1959, leading to the first atlas of the far side. Subsequent Soviet missions and NASA's Lunar Orbiter program further mapped the far side. Human eyes first saw it during Apollo 8 in December 1968, and later missions provided more detailed observations. Despite communication challenges, proposals to land on the far side have been made, with China's Keqiao Relay Satellite in 2018 improving communication. On January 3, 2019, Chang'e 4 achieved the first soft landing on the far side, conducting groundbreaking research. This mission mapped material ejected from the moon, revealing its geological past and helping to understand its formation and evolution. The far side of the moon presents opportunities for placing a large radio telescope, taking advantage of its natural shield against Earth's radio signals. This could enhance astronomical observations and research. However, Challenges like lunar dust, protection from solar flares, and shielding against radio sources need to be addressed. Future missions propose deploying robotic observatories to measure electromagnetic waves from the early universe. The far side also offers resource exploration potential, particularly in its Maria regions believed to contain helium-3, valuable for fusion reactors. Thorium, found in regions like the compton belkovich thorium anomaly, could be used for nuclear power, supporting long-term lunar missions and settlements. Recent events, such as India's Chandrayaan-3 mission, show ongoing lunar exploration. Chandrayaan-3, launched on July 14, 2023, 
successfully landed near the lunar south pole on August 23, 2023, making India the fourth country to land on the moon. The mission discovered unexpected temperature variations and identified sulfur on the lunar surface, among other elements, providing valuable data for future missions. Seismic measurements captured by the mission have enhanced our understanding of the moon's composition and geophysical attributes. The historical space race between the U.S. and Soviet Union marked a significant era, and our journey to becoming a spacefaring civilization continues. Many countries and private companies are now actively involved in lunar exploration, aiming to establish a lunar economy focused on research, innovation, and resource utilization. With continued investment, the future of space exploration looks collaborative and promising. Thank you for watching another episode of Space Discovery. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.